in the 80s, you probably would have thought I was kind of a strange child. Kind of a strange child. But only in the 80s. Never left the house without two things. Number one, my Star Wars backpack. Or what lived inside of it. 32 packets of pure grade A sugar. You could rip off the top. You could slurp one down, and it made the whole yucky world taste better. Age 11, this life of excess had caught up to me, and I needed a heart-to-heart -heart with Mom. Mom, why does my stomach stick out so much further than all the other kids? Am I dying? Mom started every conversation the same way. Oh, my perfect little angel from heaven. She then dropped the proverbial hammer. Son, your stomach sticks out so far because of all that sugar you eat. This revelation crushed me. Tears streaming down my cheeks. Mom did what moms do. She threw me a lifeline. Out of her pocket, she pulled a pink packet of perfection. The holy grail of weight loss in the 1980s. Sweet and low. She told me that if I would simply replace my sugar with these, my stomach would be a thing of the past. After one last bender, I decided to start the next morning. I poured my bowl of Frosted Flakes. I squirted my chocolate syrup on top. I sprayed my whipped cream. And then I delicately sprinkled one packet on top. I slowly raised the spoon to my mouth. I wasn't expecting much. I had had mom's diet foods before. The styrofoam rice cakes, the tab cola. And then I took that first bite. Oh my God. It was incredible. These 32 packets were going to be the easiest thing I had ever done. Back then, I had the American philosophy. If a little bit is good, it must mean a lot is better. So I decided to go with 64 packets all at once. I needed this stomach gone yesterday. With each bite, I would literally look down and I would see results. Finishing my bowl, I jumped up into the mirror and I was examining my hot new body. Loved it so much, I decided to do something I had never done before. Walk to the bus stop by myself. Typically, I walked with Johan. He was my only friend. He was an exchange student from Germany, but today, all eyes needed to be on moi. I burst out that front door. I thought, ladies, watch out for the JD. I was strutting down the sidewalk like Travolta in Saturday Night Fever. I spun around, baby. I was staying alive until the fateful second spin. Disaster struck. Turns out 64 packets of Sweet and Low creates side effects bombastic flatulence but worst of all my stomach it seemed to be telling my buns son you've got 30 seconds to get to the house and the clock starts now spinning back around i see johan coming up behind me and strangely he's speaking german in a responsatorial fashion i tightened my buns like a vice and I, I mustered, ich bin gut, as Johan stepped into the cloud, a stench I don't want to imagine. He collapsed. As I stepped over him, it dawned on me, bombastic flatulence in conversational German. It sounds exactly the same. I must have looked literally like a running penguin as I got to the front door, only to realize it's true. We all experience pride before the fall. In my haste to show off my hot new body, 
I'd locked myself out of the house. It was time for my first executive decision to jump the fence and go what I now coined caveman style. When I landed over the fence, it was right next to dad's competition rose bush. Let's just say it was fertilized heavily that day. I jumped in the pool to clean off, only to make it back to the bus stop for my classmates to now call me the running penguin. Getting home, things got interesting. Mom wasn't there with my chef Boyardee. My sister Melanie was and she was crying. Brother, mom came home on her lunch break to let Angel out. That was the dog superimposed on my head. Turns out the favorite place for her to do her duty, dad's competition, Rosebush. She went to wash down Angel's potty and mom saw this something she didn't understand. It could come from a five pound toy Pekingese. Brother, Angel's dying. Mom took her to the vet to put her down. The familiar jangle of the bell on Angel's collar filled the room several hours later, and I learned that silence is golden. I didn't speak of it for 30 years before I finally confessed to dad. It was why he had won first prize that year, the only time in a decade. Toastmasters guests, please think of this speech as both humorous and a cautionary tale. If a little bit is good, it doesn't mean a lot is better. Unless you're my dad, he has now mysteriously won the Rose competition. Five years running. Contest master.